Hi everyone, I'm Matt Shanahan with Train by Tex, and I hope you enjoy this video. All right, so today I want to cover two electrical circuits, very similar but very different at the same time, and some of the approaches that we need to take as technicians when we're testing these different circuits. So I'm just going to draw out first some basic electrical circuits. So first one I'll do is going to be, you know, battery, and then we'll go to a uh, switch. Just picture this right now, it's just a basic toggle switch. And I'll go to a resistor, that'll be our load, and then ground at all times. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and draw a very similar circuit, but instead of switch power, we're going to make it a switch ground. So B plus, we're going to go to the resistor, and then we're going to go to a switch, and then ground. So as you can see, they both have you know power, ground, similar load, but the switch is on the positive side here and the switch is on the negative side here. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to spend a few minutes going over expected voltage conditions in these circuits. Because when you have a switch power, this wire right here, that's going to be what we call a resistive path to ground with the switch open, or it's going to be voltage with the switch closed. On your switch ground circuit, you're going to have a resistive path to voltage or power and then zero volts. So resistive path to power would be the switch open and the switch closed you're going to have zero volts there. So let's go ahead and look at voltage conditions. So green that's going to be with the switch closed and the, sw the um, circuit is on and then red is going to be switch open and that would be really no current flowing, circuit is off. So at this point right here, we're going to have 12 volts all the time, even with current flowing. With the switch open though, we're going to have 0 volts at this point, and then 0 volts on the ground side. On our switch ground circuit, we're going to have 12 volts here, but also, after the load, we're going to have that resistive path to power and no current swing, so we're still going to see 12 volts and then 0 volts on the ground side. All right, let's take a look with the switch closed. Still have 12 volts up here. And the one thing that's going to change is you're now going to have 12 volts here instead of 0 because the switch is closed. That resistor right there is going to take the voltage drop, and so you're still going to have 0 volts on the ground side, hopefully, right? All right, over here, you're going to have 12 volts on the power side, but what's going to change is you're now going to have zero volts after the load with the switch closed, you're going to have ground, you still have ground all the time here. So now if we step back and look at these two circuits, at the end of the day they still have same resistor, if you look they have power up here, ground down here. The difference in terms of voltage changes happen between the switch and the load. So one of the things that we can, you know, think to our head as technicians when we're looking at modulated circuits is if we want to see a change either with our meter or an oscilloscope we would want to go in between the switch and the load with our positive lead. Now just to you know switch to electronics world stuff we're actually going to see on a wiring diagram I'll kind of draw something you probably see on a uh, more like on a diagram here so maybe you're going to have you know hot at all times written up on the, the diagram I'm just going to say B plus you know, you go through a fuse, da 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 then you go to your load. Okay, and then all of a sudden all it says is, you know, it goes to this box down here, they label it some type of module, PCM or whatever. And so you're like, well, um, this isn't how Matt taught us, you know, he sh showed us switches and switch power, switch ground. So we have to go back to some of our basic electrical principles here when we're looking at a wire diagram and looking at a circuit. So something, let's just say there's a fuel injector, ignition coil, whatever else. Any load on a, on a car, any load in electrical circuits, they need to have power and ground to work. So here, you got the power, it's labeled for us. You know, a lot of times they'll say, hey, this is fused, hot at all times, whatever else. So now we can assume, going back to our basic electrical principles, that this is power, this has to be ground. More so, we can say, okay, something like a fuel injector isn't something we're going to have on all the time. So we can say, hey, this is not only a ground, but it's a switch ground. And so you can kind of picture a circuit like this, more like this over here. And that's going to help us making determinations as to where to probe and then what to expect for results. 
So let's say now we are at the point where we are going to maybe look at things with an oscilloscope. We need to understand what is on and what is off. What is high voltage, what is low voltage. And these examples right here will kind of prove out why you need to be aware of this. So I'm just going to say, um, we're going to say that, you know, this is now a modulated circuit, module controlled, and it's going to be 25% on. So 25% duty cycle. Let's go ahead and we'll start out with the switch power. And so if you look, let's just make a little imaginary oscilloscope here. And we'll say down here this is 0 volts and this is 12 volts. Going back to the changes that happen, you know, we're going to probe somewhere around here to get our results. And if we look back, so when zero volts is occurring, when we have zero volts on this, that means that the switch is open, circuit is off. When we have 12 volts, the switch is closed, circuit is on. So we're going to see something like this. At 25% on, 25% on, we're going to see something that looks like this. So you're going to spend less time at 12 volts, more time at 0 volts. So up here, this would represent about 25% of the time. Down here would represent about 75% of the time. Not to scale because I've drawn it. Okay, this is why, again, I fix cars. I, I, don't, I wasn't an artist here, so just bear with me. But down here, again, 75%, about 25%. The important thing to understand is that the 0 volts, the 0 volts means off. The 12 volts means on. Let's go to our switch ground circuit, which by the way, switch ground circuits are much more common on a car, but we still have a lot of switch power circuits. Let's draw another imaginary oscilloscope here. 0, 12. And the thing that's going to change now is 12 volts means off. 0 volts means on. Exact opposite. So when you have a uh, switched ground circuit, you're going to spend a lot more time at 12 volts on this 25% on and less time at zero. And so now it's important for us to understand that being low and voltage, when you go low, that means that the circuit is on. Going high, that means the circuit is off. So as you can see, these are kind of mirror images of each other. And so that's why it's really important to understand where to probe, but also what zero volts mean and what 12 volts means because it can be completely opposite depending on what kind of circuit you have. So hopefully you can apply this and you know hook up the scope to a car now and understand these modulated circuits better. Thank you.